Welcome to our cruise life. I'm Don Swingle. I'm Kathleen. We are in Ocean K Reserve in the Bahamas. In this video, we're going to take a look at MSC's beautiful ship, Maravilla. Are you ready for a tour? I am. All right, let's do this. Alrighty, here we go. This video will be divided into three parts. First, we will explore the uniqueness of this beautiful ship. Then in part two, we will share a little about the ports we visited. And then in part three, we will give you our honest opinion about cruising aboard the Maravilla and MSC in general. So let's get the stats out of the way. Then we can dive into part one. MSC Cruises is a division of a larger company called Mediterranean Shipping Company, or MSC for short. MSC Cruises has 22 ships in the fleet and at the time of our cruise had three ships operating from the United States. That will change as new ships are added and current ships are reassigned to different ports. The other two ships are Davina and Seashore. The Seascape will join the party later this year. Ah, uh, but I digress. Here are the stats. The Maravilla was born in 2017 with a birth weight of 167,600 gross registered tons. That makes her an average sized cruise ship. She's a little over a thousand feet long, has 18 decks and boasts 2,224 staterooms. 64% of which are balconies. She can carry 4,488 passengers at double occupancy or all the way up to 5,386 by stuffing more in each cabin. She also carries 1,400 crew members. She boasts four swimming pools and 10 hot tubs, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And one last stat that I find helpful is her space ratio of 31 at full capacity. That simply means how much elbow room you have on board. By way of comparison, the Carnival Horizon has a space ratio of 28, and the Royal Caribbean Odyssey of the Seas has a ratio of 35. Okay, enough stats, right? Let's get on to the good stuff. So what makes the Maravilla stand out among so many other cruise ships? Well, in many ways, she is the same at least until you pass through the terminal ramp and into the ship's central promenade called Galleria Meravia. My first response was, wow, this is a beautiful ship. I'll just let the pictures prove my point. The 315-foot central promenade is filled with boutiques, restaurants, and tranquil spots for shopping, music, parties, and more. Of course, there are those signature Swarovski crystal staircases, that's a mouthful to say, but the real wow factor is the full ceiling LED screen with its ever-changing images. Another unique feature of the Meravilla found right there on the promenade is Jean-Philippe Chocolat and Café. I don't have any idea how you actually say it, but that's how I said it. As well as choosing from a variety of exquisite chef-created chocolate candies, guests can also create their own chocolate bars. This boutique also offers a wide assortment of delectable French macaroons and freshly roasted coffee. Then there is the Broadway Theater. Most cruise ships have a theater, but this one stands out as both large and tastefully designed. It's in here that we watched the big production show called The Way. It was a typical song and dance show, but we thought it was done a little better and with a little more variety than the last few cruises we have been on. Then moving up to Deck 18, we find several features that I would include in our unique discoveries. All of the ship's youth programs are clustered around the sportsplex. I think that was a great idea. Rather than the programs scattered around the ship, they can be found all together. This is very convenient for parents. And there are even Legos. 
What is really unique is inside the Sportsplex. Here you will find a two-lane, full-size AMF bowling alley. At the time of our cruise, the bowling alley could be yours for $50 an hour for up to seven persons per lane. Adjacent to the bowling feature, there are two full-size Formula One racing simulators. Apparently, it is harder than it looks, but it looks like a lot of fun. This feature was priced at $12. Turn around and you will find the entrance to the Cinema 4D. And in there, you can choose your own interactive experience. The Cinema 4D will cost you $11 for adults and $9 for children at the time of our cruise. Then wedged in between the other attractions is the flight slash roller coaster simulator. There was no price posted for this attraction, but I assume its prices would be similar. Fund passes are available, which allow you to bundle the various attractions and save a little money. Although it's called a pass, it is not an unlimited pass. For example, a $50 pass will get you $60 worth of fun, and a $100 pass will yield $140 in the attractions. Okay, while we are up here on the top decks, let's go ahead and explore the other entertainment and recreation features. Next to the Sportsplex is a full-size indoor basketball court. It wasn't used much on our cruise. Perhaps it's because it's in an unusual place. By the way, you might notice that there is no deck 17. That's because in Italy, the number 17 is considered unlucky. Like American ships usually don't have a deck 13. Moving forward from the Sportsplex on Deck 16, you will naturally find yourself at the Fitness Center. Moved aft from the Sportsplex, and you will arrive at the Horizon Amphitheater and the Horizon Pool. Ascend up to Deck 18 in the Sportsplex to access the Sky Lounge, a beautiful place to relax and enjoy a beverage not too far from your kids. Now on to Deck 19, where we discover the Polar Aqua Park and the Himalayan Bridge. Uh, that's their version of a ropes course. A funny thing happened while we were there. A teen approached us and asked if I was Wolf Blitzer. I, I don't see it, but apparently they did. Okay, let's work our way down the deck, starting with Deck 15. Other cruise lines would call this the Lido Deck. The entire back half of this deck is occupied by the Marketplace Buffet. A plethora of menu items are offered from multiple serving stations. There's even an outdoor dining area at the rear of the ship. That became, quickly, one of our favorite places to eat. And when you've had your fill in the buffet, make your way forward to the pool deck, passing a grab-and-go dinery and the Atmosphere ice cream bar. Then pass two exterior view glass elevators to the Atmosphere pool. This stylish swimming area offers plenty of room in both the pool and the sun lounging area. Now keep moving aft to yet another pool called the Bamboo Pool. This one features a retractable roof and two hot tubs. Let's take one of those panoramic elevators down to Deck 7. Starting forward, we find the ship's spa. Then approaching that amazing LED dome again, we discover the Brass Anchor, which is MSC's version of an English pub on the port side of the ship, and the TV studio and bar on the starboard side of the ship. Aft of the TV studio is a steakhouse and the champagne bar, and back over to the other side of the ship for Kato Sushi and Teppanyaki. Continue moving aft on Deck 7, you will find the Casino Imperial. I'm not a gambler, so I can't assess the worth of the casino, but I know that it is tastefully decorated. Then passing through the casino, you arrive at the Carousel Lounge. This area provides an alternate entertainment venue from the main theater. During the day, the screens are raised for a panoramic view off the back of the ship. 
down those signature Swarovski staircases and into the Infinity Atrium to book your excursions, or dine at the Waves Restaurant, Business Center, and Service Desk are also located on Deck 5. There is one more subject to explore on our tour of the Meravia, that is the staterooms. As with most cruise lines, MSC offers a plethora of cabin types and categories, each with its own pricing structure. Sorry, I said plethora again, didn't I? But it's true. There is a cabin type for most every need and budget, from a small, single cabin to one of those sprawling suites up in the Yacht Club. Welcome to our room. We are in 14077. I like to, it's magnetic, so I like to identify ourselves. You do your medallion, and it will open, turn green, and the door opens. And here's our beautiful balcony room. Welcome in to our beautiful room. When you walk in, you need to put your key card in this slot. Two things happen. You're able to put lights on, and it lets your room attendant know that you're in the room. Another handy, and here's your thermostat. You've seen the bathroom, beautiful bathroom full-size tub and shower, plenty of storage, plenty of room. We have closets, of course. This side, some shelves, two drawers, and areas down here. Then you have an area up here. You have your safe, which you put a code in to open and put your valuables in. And on this side is for your hang-ups, which were full of hang-ups. There's a little shelf over here you could put your shoes, which I did. A little shelf, can you see it? <laughs> this is a little bit of a place to sit for your laptop. And you can blow dry your hair and store some things. And passing our beautiful king size bed, we have our balcony. We have two layers of curtains. And what a view. Every day, the ocean is beautiful. It's locked. There you go. Our four night cruise aboard MSC Maravilla included two ports of call. The first was MSC's own private island in the Bahamas called Ocean K Reserve and Nassau. I will not dwell on Nassau because it is currently undergoing a major transformation, so anything I might share will soon change. But I do want to talk about Ocean K. This small island is a newer development, but is quite amazing. It offers about two miles of white sandy beaches with those famous deep blue and turquoise waters. Many of MSC's cruises include an overnight stay on this island, which adds to a uniqueness of its own, including an after-dark light show from the lighthouse and bonfires on the beach. And there's no need to return to the ship for food. There are food trucks and a large dining pavilion on the island with island-appropriate meals prepared by the ship's culinary crew. There's also a marina, a shopping area, a wedding pavilion, a hotel, and of course, an area reserved just for Yacht Club members. But of course. If you are still watching this video, well, thank you. We will conclude with our take on the MSC Maravilla. Please keep in mind that opinions are like noses. Everyone has one. We are not drinkers, we're not gamblers, nor do we spend a lot of money on excursions, so our views might be different than yours. But as far as the ship goes, we think the Meraviglia is a stunning Italian beauty. The design is classy and tasteful. It seems that the Meraviglia should be compared to premium ships, but her direct competitors our Carnival, Royal Caribbean, and Norwegian Cruise Line. The crew is friendly and helpful. Like most cruise ships, the crew comes mostly from Asian countries, and with hearts of service and growing mastery of multiple languages, they are a delight to be around. 
Then there is the food. Expectations are usually very high, which may be unfair considering the thousands of meals that must be prepared each day. I usually warn first-time cruisers that cruise food should be compared to banquet food rather than expensive five-star restaurants. That said, however, we found most, not all, but most every meal to be excellent in both the main dining rooms as well as the buffet. If you want to kick your dining experience up a notch, then try the specialty restaurants on board. This is an Italian ship, so it's going to be different from American cruise lines. That said, of course, you think about the pizza. Is pizza good on the Meravia? In a word, yes. But don't expect two pounds of cheese on every slice. Instead, expect unique toppings and an eat-it-all kind of crust. Overall, we give the Meravia a very high rating and look forward to cruising aboard her again when she returns from Europe back to Port Canaveral. That said, keep in mind, we are empty nesters, knowing that competing cruise lines offer attractive features just for families. The Meravia does not have a roller coaster or a surfing simulator, but it does have a nice little water park, a 4D theater, a bowling alley, and so forth. Finally, MSC cruises often offer very competitive prices and perhaps less crowded ships. So, what do you think of the Meravia? We welcome your feedback and invite you to comment below. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching. This is our cruise life. See you next time.